Hey, this is Matthew Butler, and welcome to the organic line growth tutorial here. I'm just going to go over everything to make sure you can use this project to the best of your ability and get this like awesome file off and running for you. Make everything perfect. So basically, when you open it up, you got this sample camera. That's just like a little camera move I put in there. I'll just go over it real quick. So that's like the kind of camera move I have going on right now. Basically, you don't need to use it at all. I just put it in there because I used it in one of the preview videos and I thought it looked kind of nice. Um, and then below that, you have the Envato logo. If I go to a different view, there we go. That's just like a placeholder, basically, just so you can get the general size that you should make things. So let's say you bring in like a cube or something, a smaller cube. You want to, you know, you don't want to have it giant, more giant than this logo, and you don't want to have it extremely small compared to the logo. So just for size comparison, you, you want to keep that in mind. And then we have a light here, which I just have a small little light here in the top left of the logo. Right there. So if you have something like really long or something, you might need to move this position or delete it or something like that. And then below that we have the six different placeholders that we have working. Oops. The six different um, position placeholders for th where the line's going to go. So you can start on any number. I just enjoy starting on number one because, you know, it's number one. Why wouldn't you want to start at number one? And then basically you just animate that and wherever you animate it that's where it's going to be um, the lines going to be going so let's just there's a keyframe here from zero into like a hundred I believe yeah a hundred on the X if you just play that through it's just this nice little animation going and in that is the lines so Go to our controls, which basically controls the whole project. So if you go in there and then you go to the control setting, this is like the master controls for basically everything. And then we have the position controls, which controls each individual null here. So, you know, position one, you go to position one and you got your controls. So let's start off with the main controls. We got disable all particles. Let's turn this cube off so you can see your particles. Go to the beginning and play it. So you got your particles shooting out. If we disable them right here, they're disabled. So if you're just like testing out the location of where you're going to animate your keyframe, whatnot, that is where an easy Let's say you're using five of these, it's easier to just click this to disable all of them. And then we got disable wind as well. Let's uncheck this so you can see it. And it'll look kind of like a fireworky kind of effect here. Kind of like a straight out, you know, you know, that kind of effect compared to more the wind effect that we had going on earlier. So if we go back to the beginning you notice these nice organic wind effect going that uh, you can disable if you want. And then below that is the slowdown speed. So usually I leave this about 10, but it all just depends on the size of your object and what kind of animation you're trying to go for. If you're like trying to trace like, you know, text or something, like make a calligraphy type uh, thing or something, whatever, you'll want to have this kind of a uh, high number so it doesn't go everywhere with the wind. Uh, and then if you want to just like keep expanding and expanding, you know, this is going to give you a much larger feel and it'll, it'll be harder to tell if you're writing like text or something. But, I mean, if you're doing it inside of a logo or something, you won't even know the difference except it's, like, expanding larger and one's, like, staying really close. So let's just leave that at 10%. And then your logo object is basically 
I'll just put the placeholder here. Um, you'll notice right away that these giant lines that were extruding everywhere is just staying inside of the logo now, which is exactly what we want it to do to make this nice little the actual shape of the logo. Um, so let's say we have this cube here that we originally made. We want to make sure we push C and make it um, not a primitive. So we have this polygon now and drop it in and give it a test run. Oh, one thing to note, you can't have more than one in here. <laughs> Let's go back to the beginning, play, and everything's getting stuck in this cube now. So we got this nice square little animation going on now. And um, yeah, when you bring in your cube or text or logo, whatever it is, if you're just doing a line, whatever, um, you want to make sure you turn this bottom stoplight to red. So if you don't, run it out and see this preview. Oh wow, you got a cube. You can't see it because the cube's there. So you want to turn that uh, cube off and then obviously when you render it out you'll be able to see it. A nice thing to know if you're working with this but you want to see the, the shape still, just like this placeholder logo, um, you want to turn this x-ray file on and then you can see where the path is, you know. Um, let's go down into the position controls now. Position controls, you got one through six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we got position control one that has the animation, just general animation, um, going on this for the sample. So if we wanted to disable it, you can click that. So basically the same as this, disable, except let's say you're working with like, uh, three different ones and um, you want to actually you know test it out without your computer slowing down so much they can't really test it out where your path is going to be following you can just click disable one and you'll see um, it show up for the other two or other one whatever you know so that just disables that one and then moving on, we have particle amount. So basically, let's play this through. Oh, uncheck that. Go back to the beginning. Play it through. And we have a nice flow of particles coming out. We want to make sure this is like a nice, nice number. So you want to take a little time to do this. And sometimes, if you have like quick moves, you have like a slow move and then a quick move, you'll need to make like a keyframe. So it might be good at 20, but later on, if you're moving something really fast, you might need to crank this up a little. So an example here is, let's drop this down to 10 actually. Start from the beginning. One important thing, hopefully you just saw, uh, saw like a weird um, like line up here, right here. Basically, that is because you're playing it and then you're going back to the beginning. If you want to avoid that, and you're like, whoa, what's going on here? You just stop your playing, go back to the beginning, and then play it. A good note of rule of thumb here is make sure you don't have any keyframes on frame zero. You start on frame one for all your uh, movement and that will help you a lot avoid these uh, random particle explosions happening. So anyways, back to what I was saying. So you got these like explosion happening, but it's not really happening smoothly. It's like more of like a burst action. You see, kind of like a firework actually, which is not probably not what you want. So you might need to crank this up a little bit and have it turn into that smooth line. So you want to take your time on this particle amount. You don't want to go too crazy though because I mean if you crank this up 2500 that's probably close to 2500 particles shooting out every frame. So this is going to slow down your computer extremely a lot if you crank it up too high for um, 
too long of a period of time. Then under that is the vibration random seed and the vibration controls. So let's drop these to zero and let's disable it so we can just see our null moving around. So you should see a little black dot right here moving. And let's say, you know, that's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. It's not very organic at all. So let's just crank this up to 100 X, Y, and Z. And notice the second little black dot. That's moving around, giving you this, like, organic kind of a feel to it. Um, you'll notice another one over here. That's just because probably one of these positions is not at zero. Zero, 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 zero. Well, I'm not sure where that one's. Oh, it, that is actually that one. Okay, so you have that one moving around and everything. Everything's good. Now it looks more organic and whatnot, but you're like, oh, that one, you know. You just need like a different feel. You just change your seed and then give you a different seed. And the position will be different. Sorry about the dog. Hopefully you guys don't hear that in the background. Um, and then uh, we got hair controls below that. So let's turn this back on so you can see it. Got particle exploding, and it's staying in the size of the cube. Okay, so you're like, uh, I want my hairs to be a little bit larger. Crank that up to two. Now you got these giant hairs, and then you got variation as well. So let's say uh, you want more variety. Just change that number. And you got a whole different slice of life going on. Let's crank this back to like 0.1 and have a variety of point of four, you'll have a very different sizes going on, which is pretty nice depending on what you're going for. And then for color here, basically this beginning area is the origin. I'll give you a quick example. Origin and then the end of all of these. So I usually like to have it white because it looks really cool. To have like a white streak starting it, kind of like it's uh, on fire or something. And you obviously don't need it though. You can just drag that white guy off and you'll see, you know, you just have your reds and then the green in the middle where it originated from. And basically that's your settings, your setup there. Um, the same exact thing goes for all these other position. So position two, here, controls, position two, obviously, and so on and so forth. And let's say you got position two, you animate something. Let's do that right now. You have it up here, make a keyframe, it's frame 79, and then at frame 100, drag it down, and go back to your controls. Disable one now because we just want to see number two. Then play. Nothing's happening until 79, and we gotta enable that. So click the disable one. So now you have number two enabled, and there we go. Nice flying, organic feeling, you know, wavy thing going on. So, so another thing you can do is. For your position, you can like right click, go to Cinema 4D Tags, and go to Align Spline. Then you have a spline tag here, which let's say, let me make a little spline here. There we go, we got a spline. And go to our tag that we just made, drag our spline in there, go to frame one. And then go to frame, let's say 70, make that 100, and let's give it a play. So it's now playing off of that spline, which 
you know, you can get some really nice flowing lines off that instead of doing the keyframe straight on your null object here. Um, and you notice these lines are just, you know, they look cool, but it doesn't have that shape that it originally had. You can just go back to your controls and change your main control here. Slow down speed. Let's jack that up to something high. And play it again. And you'll notice it keeps the shape more intact of the original spline. So you'll be able to see it better. So that's a nice feature you can just add if you need. Um, that's basically it, I believe. Uh, let's go to your render settings. So click this little guy. You have render settings come up. Um, you can go to output and change your height and width. If you're doing this 1080p, change that, whatever. Then frame length. You'll need to, if you're doing like your animation is only 100 frames long, or if it's like, you know, 3,000 frames long, you'll need to change that from and to. Then save, save it out, make sure you save it out. I have it saving to a PNG file, but you can change it to a QuickTime file if you're just making a QuickTime file, whatever. If you're not bringing it into After Effects, then I have a depth pass, which is great in After Effects if you want the, like the depth to be a little blurred, but if you have really thin lines, that blurring will be less, um, it'll be kind of a problem because once you blur it, it becomes so faint that you can't really see the lines anymore. Um, and then we, if you go to anti-aliasing, you can change this to geometry and you'll decrease some of your render times, even though your render times will probably be really, really fast. If you need it shorter, doing like a test render or something, change that to geometry, it'll render faster. Also, you can change this AA quality in the hair render. You can change that to best to get the best quality out of it, or you can change that to like medium or low, and you'll get obviously a lower quality render, but it will be quicker. That's uh, Cinema 4D settings for you. Um, if we hop over into After Effects, open it up, you got a black background and we got a white background. Pretty basic stuff. And then we got our light leak I have included. So you have your light leak, which is basically this like orange, yellowish creeping in light here, which is, it looks nice. Um, and if you bring it into a new scene or something, you want to make sure you click the uh, transfer mode here and change it from normal to like add light and screen, color dodge, overlay, or soft light, one of those five or whatever I just said, six. Um, I usually use add, but once you do that, uh, you'll be able to see like your background and then your um, your other layers. So just the breakdown of this file, all these red files here, those are just the background, and then the blue file is your light leak, and the same thing goes with this. Red is the background, and the light leak. That's basically it. Hopefully this explained everything you need to know. Um, just going to reiterate this one more time. Um, you have your placeholder logo here. You can delete that right away. But for size purposes, you probably want to stay um, in the same area for sizes as compared to this. If you make it too big, you're going to need more and more particles, and it's going to slow your computer down like crazy. If you make it too small, you're going to have particles shooting all over the place, and you won't be able to tell what's going on. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Hopefully you uh, were able to follow along and are making very useful things with this project. I'm really, really excited about this, and hopefully you are too. And if you have any questions, just shoot me an email over on VideoHive, and I'll be sure to get back to you and answer your questions. Thanks a lot.